It's a brave new world of CSGO. We're seeing more upsets than ever as teams like Extra Salt, Anonimo, Spirit, Gambit, and more show they're capable of challenging the former top dogs. Some of the most renowned brands like Liquid, FaZe, and Fnatic are in serious trouble and their star players aren't going to save them. Some may put their troubles down to online play, but that doesn't do justice to the crisp tactics we've seen from some of these breakout teams. Sure, online play has claimed some casualties and some players do thrive on crowd energy, but there's more to the story here. So let's dive into the several factors that turned the online era into the upset era. First and foremost, we have to talk about the talent that's long bubbled under the surface of the CIS region. Earlier in the year, Gambit and Spirit seemingly came from nowhere to become two of the best teams in the world. At IEM Katowice in February, four out of six teams in the playoffs were from CIS. And he's running out of time as well, doesn't hit it. Verta's pro baby, they've done it. They're into the semi-finals and they send Astralis home. All the big names knocked down on their way. IEM Katowice 2021, it's got a very different flavor. First Vitality, Furia, even Astralis can't touch them. The known quantities were Na'Vi and VP, but Gambit and Spirit were looking even stronger, with incredibly well-drilled individual players. Every time a Gambit player turned a corner, they'd do it with support, and they'd do it perfectly. It also helps that Shiro is a clutch machine. One versus three to try and find and even though he's been great in clutches, this one might be a little too far gone. Peeks out with the orb. First man down. Electronic going to offer himself up as well. And now just Flamey. They know where he is. Shiro. Oh, caught with the knife in hand, but still alive. Still a threat. And looking to add another clutch sure to the tally. Does. It's up towards the A-bomb site. So little time. But he will have enough to get that bomb down, perhaps, as he rotates on in. It's going to be close. He's there with a second left on the clock. Bomb now planted. He even considers just staying for the fight. But after getting tagged, Shiro has escaped. And he could be anywhere. Flamey knows it. Speed is his prerogative as he moves in quickly through the toilets. All the noise for Shiro in the world. And he posts up for the clutch. Gambit have quickly risen to the top. And even more CIS teams capable of upsetting the big dogs are emerging. Na'Vi had recently beaten Gambit twice. But then, relative unknown Zakuma trounced them, 16-2, 16-10. The moral here is there are no easy games, even in the lower tiers of Russian Pro CS. Everyone is well-drilled enough to capitalize on your mistakes. The well-drilled squad is something Heroic have enjoyed as well, as they've upset Astralis more than once in recent Danish derbies. These young players know exactly what to do, and their aim is on point too. Off and smoke out from Dupree. Flash is about to pop and still three players standing here for Heroic. As Tessus in with the first, goes in for the second as well. Dupree tries his best, but Tessus continues to mow them down. Another 4K from the back of the B site. Another deciding factor here is Cadian, undoubtedly one of the most impactful players this year so far. His orping has been stellar, his mid-round calls are brilliant, and he seamlessly brought in refresh and shush to get back to winning ways. Plus, he did this. Gets the AWP and kills the guy CT. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh my god, he's knifed him and he's gotten away with the AWP. I'm starting to get nervous. There's no way, there's no way. KD, you can't win Pro League like this. You can't win Pro League like this. No way. Axar's left, 40 seconds and the bomb's on A. Take your time, son. You're about to make the play of your career. Seconds. Now, Axel's on ramp. He's got 30 seconds to think this one through. A knife kill? You can't. Kadian, he's thinking about ramp. Jumps Tore him. Axel gets the info. He just has to hit this shot, and he's done it for Heroic. The leader, calling well above his years, clearing. Oh, oh no! no! You're an animal! Heroic have done it, and I just can't believe it! Another derby took place in France, when unsigned and unsalaried Double Pony knocked former world champions Vitality into Flashpoint's lower bracket. At 16-5, 16-7, it was brutal revenge for NBK, who once upon a time vied for the in-game leadership of Vitality. He knew the secret of shutting down former teammate Zaiwu, keeping the star sniper to only 9 kills on Inferno. An inability to win opening duels meant Double Pony could bully Vitality, funneling them towards B-Site and stacking it with defenders. 
Vitality just never looked comfortable. Double Pony, they kept pressuring Vitality, but sometimes it just felt like Vitality dug their own graves in some of these rounds. I mean, you're seeing right there a miss smoke at CT. It felt like there were a couple lapses in the gameplay of Vitality, which we don't really expect given the success that they had in the previous year. NBK or not, this should have been easy for Vitality, and their sloppy performance may have repercussions. The squad is in a weakened state, and players have spoken vaguely about personal troubles on the team, but RMR points don't care about your feelings, and the former top dogs need to make no mistakes going forward if they want to be at the Stockholm Major. Mouse sports have been exciting to watch as well. Of course, you can never truly call a squad with Rops, Frozen, and BMAS an underdog, but with the recent change of IGL, nobody expected them to be taking big scalps so soon. But that bomb is in no man's land, and surely it's a matter of time until they peek him. You can see Frozen there, and there's Dexter for the final kill! Mouse Sports are your champions of Flashpoint 3. What a performance from Mouse Sports. And Dexter, I mean, he can be pleased. It was worth leaving his child behind after all. That was a great performance. They dropped, what, one map in the entire tournament? Yeah, one map in the grand final. And that was a 16-13 affair with Nip on overpass. And from there on out, utter domination. So what have they been cooking up over in Dexter's lab? Since your team is so good at reacting, we're able to just play a lot of maps and kind of play a loose style almost. Um, and then, yeah, that that makes it really easy for us to have a seven map pool without having to stress over everything. Dexter has managed to quickly get his squad ready for any mid round events with smart positioning, something that had dropped off under Carrigan's leadership. His players always hold a clever angle and are capable of swiveling and supporting a teammate. Frozen has to do a lot. He's the only person on this site, but the lineup's there. Frozen with three kills and a fourth, as a matter of fact. He does take one dink but Tabson unlikely to be able to retrieve the bomb. Frozen, looking for the ace, is able to find it. Great start from the young star. We've moved away from the era of highly skilled individuals taking commands from their IGL and carrying the team. The drilling has been done ahead of time, and even though many of these players are young, they know exactly what to do in any situation. That's the edge that Gambit, Spirit, Heroic, and Mouse Sports are enjoying right now, and it's an edge too sharp for the established teams with their expensive star lineups. But why do you think we're seeing so many upsets? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below.